What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Mastery Podcast. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm really buzzing today. Um, a lot of you have asked me if uh, I could bring a very special guest on um, because I know a lot of you will know who uh, I'm about to introduce you to, but a lot of you won't. And I'm really glad that with the amount of people that listen to the Mastery Podcast, I'm going to introduce you to somebody uh, who's going to have a huge impact in your career um, and somebody who had a huge impact in mine and the team at M10, um, Michael Gordon. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Mark. It's a, it's a privilege to come and speak to you. Mate, well, do you know what? It's a privilege to every trainer listening um, because uh, we were just talking about this back in 2014. Uh, I was having uh, breakfast with Ben Pekolsky, those of you who don't know, very well-known IFBB pro educator and bodybuilding yogi, as he calls himself now. Um, and I said to Ben, Ben, what is one of the uh, most important things that I could do for my bodybuilding? And he said, train, um, train as if you're posing. And I didn't really understand in terms of what he meant by the contraction element of training like that. Um, and also, uh, we talked about that for a little while. And then he said, go and do uh, a coaching program called RTS. And uh, I'm a man, you know, I always do what people tell me to do, um, people that I respect anyway. Um, and uh, I went back and I got in touch with Michael because Michael runs his business Integra in the UK. Um, and Michael's been a coach a lot longer than me. Um, and when I first met you, you can't Michael, tell by the baby, by, by the baby face. Well, it's, it, it, it's that uh, <laughs> nice the styling, styling that I see. I've gone gray now. I'm starting to go gray. So, um, yeah, but you've, you've been, been able to keep yours. Um, but I came back and I, I reached out to Michael. And I'm going to be honest with you. You had a huge impact in my coaching. Um, like, I, I can't thank you enough for opening my eyes up to a lot of the things that we're going to discuss today. But to a lot of people listening to the, the Mastery Podcast, in summation, um, who is Michael Gordon and, and, and what, is, what is Integra? In, in, Integra is actually uh, two businesses. So for the, for the longest time, we've had Integra Personal Training, where we work one-on-one -on -one in a private studio. And then we have Integra Education. And Integra Education is... Uh, effectively a platform for trainers to continue their quest to mastery, mastery of their, of their craft. And that's why I, I love the, the word mastery for the name of this podcast, because there's, it's not, here's, here's the master's podcast. I, I'm, I'm not sure, and this is just my belief, I'm not sure that we're ever a master, but, but the quest for mastery is the thing that drives me. And it's the thing that I know drives you. And it's the thing that, that, that kind of guides us towards something. Um, but that's effectively, that's effectively what Integra is. So, so across the board, the, I've long known my, my values. I've long known my values, which are embedded into the, into the companies. And those values are really about freedom and exploration and reaching this untapped potential, whether it's our clients or whether it's students, trainers, coaches, whether it's our teams, or our communities, because obviously the way that we affect, you know, if we do good work with a client, they go into their community. If we do good work with a trainer, they go into their community, and that's 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 kind of embedded into the into the DNA. No, I think that's that's wonderful. And and you know what, I I, I really struggle. You know, when I when I wrote my book, um, I I was very very uh, conscious of, of wanting to use the word excellence and mastery because mm. this whole idea that there is no absolute there's no finish line it's as a word i think you like to use is explore right let's explore mm. it's, it's an evolutionary concept of you can just keep going um and uh i'm okay with that i managed my expectations very early on in my, my career where i went oh this is going to be forever Mm. Um, and then, and this isn't an, a kind of absolute that, as you said before, we, we, we clicked on the record, everything, all the books behind us, um, th they're tools to the toolbox and they, it will just keep growing and growing and growing. And I think it, people expect to this point where 
you know, when do we reach this this point? And do you know what? I listen to a there's a podcast called the High High Performance Podcast, which is um, Jake Humphreys, who's a mm -hmm. um, uh, he, he he hosts it with a professor, Damon Hughes, I think it is, and uh, they they referred to business and life as this climb stage, this wobble or messy middle stage, and this arrival stage, which is brief. <sighs> And then we enter back into this climb stage. And then we mm -hmm. have this messy middle stage. And we're constantly going through these crazy stages, which as coaches and business professionals and parents and people, we're always wobbling through these. And I think, uh, you know, what's wonderful about what Integra does and what, what I'm very passionate about is, you know, it's that evolution of a coach, right? Yeah. Um, and and uh, there's, no, there's no end line. And that's why I wanted to really, you know, bring this discussion to the forefront today and start our conversation by asking you what it what is coaching you know i, I was at F ifs this weekend michael um the, the fitness event and i was speaking and i and i put i asked a lot of people um and i i talked a lot about the difference between a trainer and a coach and at the end i had a lot a lot of people queue up and talk to me and a couple of you know a few people said oh, i feel like you've called me out I, i'm a trainer i'm not a coach and uh and I said, that's okay. But I, 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 it prompted me when we were discussing coming on to speak to each other. What is, in your opinion, coaching? That's good because there's, there's I, for everyone listening, this is one of those things when I'm listening to Jake Humphrey's podcast and they ask a question like that, I, I click pause. Do you listen to so it? Yeah. And so oh, click, click pause right now and, and answer that question that Mark's just said yeah. for yourself. And, and what's really interesting is that, you know, we could, we could go on to, I don't know, Wikipedia or I'm pretty sure all, these are all the coaching books on this side um, as if there's like a, a definite, you know, difference. We could look at the, the definition. I think that's useful. And then we could compare it. Like what's coaching to training, to instructing, to mentoring. Yeah. And all four of them have got distinct things. But I guess this is my current understanding it's a, it's a process for change. That's it. Love that. And so how you do that and how you package that and how I package that in terms of how I coach might be different in terms of the recipe for an individual. It might also be different from, from other coaches, but ultimately we're trying to create change. Yeah. I love that. And that's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the nuts of it. And with that, what we were also discussing is this idea that uh, there's an absolute, there's these absolutes of, you know, I, I'm going to start studying this particular element. I'm going to stay there. Um, and that's the thing that I, I, I really love. And that's the most value I'm going to bring to my client. And that's not really true because in coaching, it's this process to, essentially facilitate change and that change level means different things to different people mm. and that change level starts at different places for different people and you and i had a really great catch-up recently and had a meal um and you got really drunk and it was <laughs> standard standard yeah yeah <laughs> we're just that oh crazy no it was a very great lovely evening really good conversation but we really did get kind of deep into this topic of coaching and understanding this process and this variation of individuals that come into the coaching process mm. and i'd love to kind of explore this conversation that you know this this you know i'm, I'm going to end up speaking like you now because i feel that you, you've imprinted this in me the thing that we call coaching right and what people deliver in terms of right i'm going to special i focus more on this execution which we'll get into in a sec and we're missing out a lot of other aspects of coaching because while we're mm -hmm. having our meal we were talking about is coaching conversation mm. is coaching rapport building is coaching uh what's happening your client in the middle of the week is coaching sending them a, a meal plan to facilitate their trip away with colleagues is is coaching flexibility and mobility um and i kind of want to explore that a bit with you and just say kind of like you in this industry a lot of people will know you for teaching exercise mechanics mm. but at the core of our conversation 
was this journey that a client goes through from wherever that start may be to wherever that end be. So in your kind of thought process, where does coaching begin? You know, if you, just to touch on that, I'm known for teaching exercise mechanics and being an exercise specialist. And, and yeah, that's, cool. that's the thing that you, that's the intervention. You and I have done nutrition courses. That's, that's an intervention. We've done stretching courses. That's an intervention. We've done NLP. That's an intervention. Like all of these things are interventions, but they're, they're tools and they're tools for us to, to get a desired outcome. But if we, if we zoom out, a client comes to you and actually prior to them coming to you, there's, the, the, there's internal dialogue and expectations and experiences. They come to you and they want to get to this point where you don't just leap. So you, you set the compass and figuring out what is, what's, the, what's, the, what's the goal of this exercise? What's the goal of this session? What's the goal of this interaction that I'm having right now? So when a client first comes in here, What's the goal of that initial session, that initial consultation where you're just kind of figuring out what, what do you want? Like, what do you want? What are your expectations? What are your dreams? What are the barriers that are getting in the way? Like, what's the, for us as professionals, what's, what's the goal there? And for me, that's building rapport, developing trust, hearing them, making them feel like they have been heard and understood and respected because if they feel like that, because they don't feel like it everywhere else that they go, if they feel like that, they're more willing to actually share. And if they're more willing to share, then we can start to get on this journey. But back to this kind of timeline, if this timeline is ever fixed, let's say you've got an athlete and there's a specific date, they want to get on stage, they want to perform at the World Cup, whatever it is. You've got this timeline. The thing that you do here never looks like this. And it's what figuring out what is it that that person needs to get them to the next level. So that's the kind of, that's, I, I kind of visualize these things just because it kind of works for my screwy brain. That's, that's how I kind of think about this. Mm -hmm. Setting the compass and what, what, what specific thing does the client need right now to get them to come back for session two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely love that, you know. And I, I, I laugh at myself, Renat, because, you know, when I was thick into my bodybuilding, I mean, I was attracting a lot of people that, that 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 middle rapport building process they were with me to just get very very lean and and, and build muscle and i kind of lost touch a little bit with um the necess necessity of the rapport building process because the rapport had been built based upon the fact that i'm going to hire you for 16 weeks to get me in the best shape of my life um and them coming back was based upon whether or not they were seeing those physical changes week by week to their body shape and that was the measure by which they saw me as valuable to them right mm. and then and the guys at m10 would would sit with me sometimes and i'd be saying like you've got to be coaching people like this and coaching people like this and they were my values at the time right but i'd kind of forgotten the first six or seven years of my career i'd forgotten the 45 year old male who came in that was more bothered about how much money he was going to make when he gets on the off the train in london than he was about the exercise he was going to perform and i remember being in the gym chatting for 10 minutes because he just wanted to offload mm. what, the day, what, what was going to happen for the day. And that was extremely valuable to that person. Mm. And then we obviously went into the training session um, and I was continually supporting that person's progress. But the value that they were seeing in the coaching process with me was not necessarily how much body fat were they going to lose each week. It was a lot of other things. And I think as coaches, we get very fixated on what we know and therefore we want them to achieve this thing in a training session, but there's yeah. also what, what they need, right? Yeah. And, and so so you, you were employed by, by physique athletes um, to deliver on a result. And that was a, that was a, a physique oriented goal. Yeah. And you'd already developed a level of trust based upon the results that you'd shown. And that, that, that's what encouraged them. And they were committed to you and they would commit to that process. Yeah. That, is, in essence, is exactly the same, actually, as, as that client. But the way you communicate, instead of communicating with a before and after picture, you communicate by actually listening to what the client's needs were. So actually, you, you didn't necessarily change 
the, the, your approach, you were just actually acting in conjunction with knowing exactly what the client needed. And that's, uh, it's really tough for us as, as trainers. It's really tough for us as educators to know, you know, l- l- let's pick a book here. We've got this Kapanji book or this biomechanics of skeletal muscles that, you know, I can read that and I can, I can, I can share some information from that. It's really hard to know where it's like not to know that information. We've got to have such empathy with our clients, with our students, with the people around us to actually understand what, what, what is this experience like for you? So that 45 year old that came in, he was maybe thinking about money because that was something to do with his core emotional concerns and that might be status. Now, if you'd have come in and gone, you know what, you're full of shit, you're not really good, you can't even do lift 10 on this and you were, you, you were berating him, that would have actually impacted his status mm-hmm. and that would have disrupted that rapport that you were building. Mm-hmm. Instead, you were just allowing him some space and then you got down to work. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's, that's, that's a skill that's, that's innate to you. And how have you, you know, how have you developed that skill? And was there a time where you, as a coach went down that route of absolutes because I think for people like me and you and you being in the industry longer than me it's really important that 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 our vulnerabilities in terms of our development as coaches are shared because we're not squeaky clean we've just been in the industry a lot longer than anybody else made a lot more mistakes Mm -hmm. but in, in your early stages where did you go down some of these absolutes and maybe miss out the, the core values and pr- principles that you deliver coaching on right now and what would be maybe in terms of that coaching process what would be some of the the fundamental lessons that or the things that you may have done that you now mm. see as ah, no, no I'm, I'm I, I wish I'd added that in then but I'm also glad I didn't because I learned hmm. well is it then go back to that word mastery or development if if you were to ask anyone would you like to be better in three months than you are now most people who are listening to this podcast will say yes. Yeah. They probably wouldn't be listening to this. Yeah. So fast forward three months from now, stand there. You're worse now than you are going to be in three months. If you've progressed, then you've come from a position where, where you did something that actually you weren't happy with. Mm-hmm. And we, we need to be really comfortable with the fact that actually my work three months ago and my work six months ago was you know shit compared to what it is now. You might not say it like I do, mm-hmm. but I'm like, there's a drive in me to kind of like, I want to, I want to, you know, I want to get better at everything that I'm doing and whether that's communication, whether that's body language, whether that's presenting, whether that's reading, you know, all, all of these things. So early on, I have made just all of the mistakes, mm-hmm. meaning I've used predetermined assessments and failed people based upon what the course tells me I should do I've given people a a nutrition program that I got from you know a a book or a course well if you just follow this then you're going to get results and 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 I've and I've kind of put my kind of blinkers on when the assessment didn't show improvements or when the client was going you know this is actually not working for me and I'd be like, well, you just need to try harder. Mm-hmm. Like this is, you know, if we think we're, we're going all the way back to 1995, over all of these years, there are clearly people I've impacted and a lot more people that I've not. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and it's through being conscious of that and going, hold on, I've lost that client. They said it was because they're, you know, for financial issues. Mm. They've just walked out and bought a new Audi or whatever they've, this is not a financial thing. They're still going out the weekend and spending three or four hundred quid on a meal. In especially in London, that's what you a big meal, a big spenders is going to be. That's it. So, so, so it's it's actually being really honest with yourself, really conscious, and actually sitting with yourself, and it's really uncomfortable and kind of going, okay, where, where did I mess up? What 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 for this individual didn't work? And, and, and it's, you know, I can think of examples of, you know, a particular program for a client where I know this is the, this is what the client needed. And they were saying, this is what I want. And there's this kind of thing where 
but you know that they need this, but they want this. Mm -hmm. And if you don't deliver both of those things, you're going to lose a client. Mm -hmm. If you give the client everything that they want, but you don't deliver on what they need, at some point, they might not want to work hard. They might want to come in and just have a chat. But if they actually need to work hard to get their goals, you need to keep on addressing this. You need to keep coming back to them going, hey, I know you you say you want this goal, but 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 you keep coming in and this is how you want to progress. This is how you want this to look like. Are you sure you still want this? Like we need to address, we need to speak to people, mm-hmm. but we need to effectively wrap what the client needs with what they want. We need to figure out that, that kind of uh, combination. And I didn't do that for so long. It's such an important thing you say there. Do you know what? We coined this phrase now. We just jumped out at me when I was talking to you. It's this conscious coach. Hmm. It's a conscious coach that's consistently questioning what they're doing. Yeah. And with that, you're either a sheep, i.e. following a book and a, and a predetermined plan, very much like somebody that will that will say, every time I change the program for my clients every four weeks, they want one every four weeks. And it's like, but, but what if that program is working for five weeks? Mm. What if that program is not, not working after two weeks? Do you keep going for four weeks and then change the next one for four weeks? No, well, I've always told that you should change a program every four weeks. And that goes back to that thing which you've always done with me is, really? Let's question that. Mm. And that brings back that conscious thought process of, are you as a coach delivering something that you've been told or are you dissecting that into your understanding of what that means uh, and i we said this you know it doesn't matter what you do if it's appropriate for that person right we had that discussion didn't we mm. you know and and one of the guys at m10 said recently to me he said i'm caught on a video and my client's elbows are going backwards and it's not what a, a pull down should be and i said but at that time of the coaching journey was that the most important thing for that person to be doing and he went well no because you know he just enjoys coming to the gym and i said but we're not hurting him right hmm. and he actually he said the same thing to me is like you know but i feel good in, in knowing that even though our exercise might not look particularly great but it's not dangerous i know where that person is on their journey so they're as a coach very consciously aware of what part of the coaching process that somebody's on and i think that's an important thing for us to touch on because there's a lot of overwhelm with trainers that they're not doing the right thing would you agree yeah yeah and again go back go back to this timeline you know this might be the final outcome but you've got all of these process goals so you have a client who comes in they've never exercised before or the last time they exercised was 15 20 25 years ago you believe that the squat is going to be really useful for them it's cool exercise you want them to squat how their squat looks here is going to be different to here and it's going to be different to here you know, if we were to make everything so perfect, so perfect, where we overwhelm both ourselves and the client, that doesn't create an experience that either of us want to come back to. Mm-hmm. So if there are trainers listening and they're like, you know, I've done foundations with Michael and I've done RTS with Michael and there's all this information and how do I, how do I use that? And, 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 and I will say the same words 25 times throughout the day. This is not that you're going to go back and you're going to change everything. Because as soon as you start to try to change everything, it's kind of like, you know, when I walked into the studio this morning, if I was really trying to think of all the things that are going on within my body, I'd just freeze. Because mm-hmm. you've got this little talacrural, or you've got this first MTP, you've got this knee, you think about all the muscles. Like we, we obviously don't think about all that stuff. And so with, with our clients, you know, if you think about communication, if you think about cueing, rather than going, okay, I want you to think about these five things, well, let's remove four of them. What's this one thing that that person needs right now? And for this session, that might be it. I think, I think with, with, with coaching, and I think we're alluding to this, and I think you mentioned it a little bit, you know, if we go back to what is coaching, um, if you do a a difference of what is instructing versus what is coaching. So early on in my career, I was a gym instructor. So a gym instructor 
as someone that is there available to members. It's the, it's the, it's the training ground. It was such a valuable experience for me to have access to all of these people. And it might just be for one exercise and then I'm going and I'm kind of communicating with someone else. That's, that's your training of, of having access when you first get qualified. But instructing gym exercises, you're effectively telling someone what to do and that's it. And so there's a list inside your head. So for a bench press, you know, your shoulders are at 80 degrees of abduction, your elbows at 90 degrees, you're grabbing hold of the bar, you're taking the bar to your chest, you're locking your elbows out. There's, there's these rules. Mm-hmm. Coaching is really more about how are you going to communicate? So let's figure out what's the, what's the need of the individual right now? What's the space? What's their internal environment? What's the, what's the overall environment that we're in? We might still want the thing to look the same by the end in terms of bench press and it's some sort of pec thing. But how are you going to speak to this individual? Mm-hmm. That individual may want you to be, okay, what I need you to do is this, this, and this. They also might need you to kind of, they might want you to go, okay, what I want you to do is just sit on the bench. I want you to kind of explore that position. How does that feel? That feels good. Okay, next I want you to, so that little slight tweak there in how you deliver the instructions is based upon the individual that's in front of you. Absolutely. That is, I, I think that word coaching is communication. Mm. Human communication and, and something that I, uh, you know, I even see, see with coaches, you know, is part of my mentoring that I deliver, helping somebody to develop their personality and ability to communicate with many different types of people. Personal mm. development, since I've been 24 years a- of age, has helped me turn into an, a, a chameleon. As Dan and I always talk about coaching as our chameleons. Yeah. We're, 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 we should be, in my opinion. And I don't like to should as in like you must, but, but ultimately, in my experience, the more adaptable you can be to different people yeah um oh this person i remember going back just to, to share this with you do you remember games workshop uh, where they paint the little figurines yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know whether it's still a thing but we had a client years ago m10 who was really into those quite a um a, a, an inward gentleman you know um very nice yeah but he'd come in the gym and it's like how do we now as an individual blend to communicate with this person to make them feel comfortable in, a, in an environment which is not where they're used to painting figurines and communicate on a level that's not intense and overwhelming and scary. And this person was with us a long time. Mm. And it's like, I, I would often look at M10 and go, this is quite an intimidating environment, but somehow you want to keep coming back. And that comes down to communication. That comes down to somebody feeling comfortable. That comes down to somebody feeling not overwhelmed by the way that exercise is being delivered. And in a way that when they leave the gym and go to a different gym, that thing that you've just explained to me has been done in a particular way that I can almost replicate on my own. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I I think that's a, a lovely way of us being able to look at that is because going back to conscious coaching is... I'm going to go and learn RTS and I'm really good at biomechanics now. And I'm like, where's the communication? So now I'm going to open this up to you, if I may, Michael, because hmm. a lot of coaches, the, the, the world, as you will have seen, um, you've been teaching RTS a lot longer than anybody else. Okay. Well, not, 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 anybody not as long else, as the founder. Not as long as the founder. No, no, no. <laughs> but you've been teaching it certainly in this country more than anybody else. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I see a lot nowadays in the fitness industry, and there's nothing wrong with this, because a, a topic of discussion that myself and the team had this week at M10 was um, this, this uh, um, obsessive coaching. And I call it obsessive coaching because back when, when I did check, and they had the, the pressure cuff, do you remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we lay on our front, and you had to mm. test the strength of the TVA. Yeah. And if you didn't measure a certain number on that measure, then you were going to collapse and die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I, my perception of it was. So I had people that were very overweight lying on their front, not being able to activate their TVA <laughs> and doing 45 minutes on the mats and then going, okay, I'll see you next week. 
And they just came in and they just wanted to get bigger biceps. They wanted to lose weight, get well, whatever. <laughs> but I was not helping them, right? I was not helping them. And 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 I and I hadn't listened to the weight loss question. I hadn't listened to listen to the stressed out at home question mm. or, or challenge. I hadn't listened to the overwhelmed being in a gym thing, but I'd put them on what I had studied recently. Yeah. Knowing that that would probably make me more of a specialist. And in turn, no weight loss, and in turn, not great retention. Um, and in return, actually, I was nearly asleep on the mat for every session because <laughs> it was so bloody boring. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, what I come back to this absolute aspect referring to, to some of what I see nowadays is I'm going to spend X amount of time studying this subject. And that now becomes my passion. And that passion uh, means that you end up missing a huge aspect of what coaching is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So moving into this you know, realm of, of execution, I now see 55-year-old Sarah had two children, hasn't exercised for five years, coming in and being trained at a level of absolute execution, missing out a lot of this coaching stuff, as we refer it to. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to open up with you and move into this realm, which is a very you know, passionate and, and hugely experienced field for you. Exercise execution, and how does that fit in to coaching? So, so, so there's a couple of things to, to, to think about there. One, we're working with clients, that client who comes in and they want fat loss, weight loss. We've got um, 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 uh, uh, an array of tools that we've got so we've got exercise, we've got nutrition, we've got an understanding of their lifestyle factors, their allostatic load, all the stress is affecting them, their sleep. They may share their interactions with, with people in terms of the stresses that they're dealing with. Some people will go down a route of looking at their blood markers, endocrine system, all of that stuff. So you've got all of these variables, but let's for a trainer, let, let's bring it back to three. We've got exercise, we've got nutrition, and then we've got, let's say, lifestyle and mindset, mind flow. Yeah. So we've got those three. So I want to get phenomenally good at each of them. Because if I just get good at one exercise, and I become, you know, I eventually reach the point where I can go learn from Tom Purvis in Oklahoma mm -hmm. and reach... Uh, a point of mastery, which is the starting point for mastery in terms of the RTS journey, that's phenomenal. But if I just do that and I don't do, ah, there's a fourth one. I don't, I don't work on my ability to communicate with a client. I may, have, I may be able to quote research, but I'm not going to be able to communicate based upon the client's needs. If I just dive in and I go do, I don't know, whatever nutrition thing that you can think about, and I just dedicate my whole life to this, I'll miss out on this opportunity to the simple fact that the other part of the equation is exercise in terms of how we apply forces to this, to, to anatomy, how we apply forces to a human. As soon as we start to dive down and deep down into something, which is not a bad thing, if we do that at a cost to everything else, then our business loses and our clients lose. Mm. And that might be the other way around. Because if our clients lose, we're not going to attract new people because we're not going to get results. We're not going to retain clients. So if, if the goal for, for education is to make change within our industry with our clients to help them get towards their goals, we've got to keep on coming back out and see where does this fit in? Now, I have a passion, I've long had a passion for looking at behavior. That was prior to even finding RTS mm. and looking at communication. And so I deep dived into courses and there's a ton of books and then a, a, there's a list of about 500 on Kindle of stuff to, to dive into. But if I did that and the shit that I was delivering to clients was just haphazard exercises, that might be okay for a 12 week program but there's going to be a point where that client goes this is not helping me this is not this is hurting and that that's that's what i experienced mm -hmm. so i went through that journey of actually you know back in 
99, I did 2000. I think I still got the textbook down there from, from NASM and following their rules and then following the rules of Paul Check and then following the rules of, and I kept on applying these rules without actually understanding the, 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 the intricacies of, of the exercises they were prescribing. And for some people it worked and some people it didn't. So, so I think just to kind of like recap there, if we, we got to know what, what we do. Why do people come to us? What is it that we're actually selling? And if we understand what we're selling, what we're getting paid for, then we can measure it. And if we understand that, we go, hold on. What are the things that I do that are part of this? The way I email a client is part of my marketing. It's part of my branding. The way I, the way I, you know, um, I'm barefoot in the studio. That's just part of my branding. There's a reason why I do that. There's an intention behind it. There's a, there's a, there's an intentionality, if that's the the right word, to everything that we do. The way that this place looks. The way that when you come in, everyone says hello. All of those little things are part of uh, the the process of of being a client here. They matter, so, right? so they matter. They matter. It's 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 it, it matters. If you work in you know a, a health club, the way that your reception staff speak to your client when they walk in could be the tipping point for that client to have a good session or not. Because if every time they come in the staff are over here and they're kind of like chatting to one another and like, oh, yeah, I, you know, if, if, if there's this, you know, if, the, if there's a, a lack of a greeting that, that's relevant to the thing that you're offering, it, it starts to downgrade what you do. Um, so that's, you know, with, with across the board, even in the words that I'm saying right now, communication, we need to study it. Branding, we need to study it and understand actually what branding is. It's more than the logo. Yeah. Sales, we, we are selling ideas. Sales is not a bad thing. Sales is an amazing thing. The client's looking for something and we're helping them figure out a solution. That's sales. And would you agree at the same time, Michael, that uh, people don't want to study sales? And I think it's one of the mastery tools that must be part of your toolbox because everybody thinks it's selling a monetary value but I, I remember studying the behavioral side of, of of this of sales is study is helping a male or a female commit to you in a relationship sales is helping somebody uh, see a long-term vision as a pt for your coaching client and if you actually are able to paint that picture of what the future looks like for somebody with NLP, the future pacing methodology mm -hmm. of helping somebody to picture where they are, it's a sales strategy. Because if I can buy into you for six months and want to turn up every single day, I've sold that thing that you want, the outcome. And, and I yeah. think it's such a true thing you've just said, so true. Even with that sales process, you've got selling back and selling forward. So you're, you're, you're doing deadlift now with me and you've just lifted, I don't know, 150. Do you remember three months ago that you were just lifting 125 and you'd be like, oh, I completely forgot about that. Look how far you've come. That's not necessarily going, look how amazing I am. That's actually, you know, you put in the work, you dedicated yourself and look at the progression. Okay, now we're going for 175. And, and that selling back and selling forward, you, you, you're basically, this is, this is all of our ideas. If you go to how we communicate the, the framework or the process of, okay, I come to you and this is the goal that I want. You have to sell the idea. And the idea is, the promise is, if you stick to this process, you're going to get this thing after. It's kind of like if you, you know, what's the... What's the promise of that shoe? Because when you buy it yeah. for however much that costs, there's a promise that's a part of that. Yeah. That's part of the sales process. Yeah. There's a promise to, if you go to a really good steak place in Nottingham, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a promise based upon the name, based upon the chef. And there's definitely a promise Based upon, I'm going to invest in business mastery with Mark Coles. There's, 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 there's an integral promise. 
and whether or not your reputation um, progresses or regresses is whether or not that promise is delivered and consistently. Yeah. And so there's a continual opportunity for you not to kind of go, see, see, we're, you know, this is, this is more about you're, 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 you're desperate to keep your client. There's a quiet confidence that actually we, we did some interventions and this worked and this didn't because you're measuring stuff. But here's, here's what's happened up until this point and here's what's go, going to happen going forward. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the continual uh, navigation around where the client is in their journey, in their journey. Um, another thing with the communication, and I think with coaching, that I, I think gets missed out, but it's not, I, I think it gets missed out in terms of our industry, but it's not missed out when we go down different avenues of self-development that actually you as an individual are showing up and it's you, your whole being, your whole self that's showing up to that session. Mm -hmm. And so if you come in and you are so unaware that you, you, you're not able to focus, if you're so unaware that you're not able to maintain eye contact or, or, or you're unaware that you're just lacking confidence in what you're doing, that's going, that's going to bleed into the external environment, which is going to bleed into your client. Because you're going to go, I think, you know, I'd like you to do, I'd, I'd like you to do this exercise. And they're going to be like, dude, I'm, I, I've got, I, I don't think I should do this. Mm -hmm. Like the coaching process is of the coach and the client and having, having self-awareness then having empathy for them and then having a kind of an ability to, well, this might sound kind of wacko, but having an ability to kind of step out and be able to see this interaction and see this yeah. um, process is, is, is the skill. Professor Steve Peters in The Chimp Paradox talks about the, uh, you know, when you're in a, at a situation, it's the ability to get in a helicopter and hover above it mm. and, look, and look at what that situation means. Um, because then you have a choice. Because if you're hovering above a situation where an argument could be looming, you look at the different perspective from their side and your side, and you go, hmm, am I going to be reactive, emotional, or am I going to change my behavior? And I think from mm -hmm. a coaching perspective, there's quite a lot of reactive coaching, which is just deliver, do, deliver, do. And there's not a lot of that kind of conscious coaching, which is, hmm, what can I do different in this situation? And, and, and what, I, what I love about this, and I just wrote, wrote a little note down here, was this, going back to this idea of isolated education, is if we go and learn a subject, but we don't learn maybe how far away to stand from that person who's low in self-confidence. Maybe that we're going to go through something one day and we don't want I make contact, eye contact when they come in, but that's a, that's a really important deal breaker for them, whether or not you make them feel like they should be there that day. You know, mm. I've, I've had a client become, come up to me before, a female client. I remember, I remember. And I remember specifically the person. And uh, she arrived with this expectation that, that uh, she was just going to have this great conversation with me when she arrived. And then within five minutes, I, I remember I was coaching somebody at the time. I acknowledged when she came in. And um, she came up to me straight away. She goes, well, why didn't you come and say hello? And I was like, well, I, I acknowledged. And I was like, Mark, that person really values that. Yeah. And then it was like, from now on, that's going to be my main priority when that person comes in. And, and, and it's so interesting that the communication and understanding of the person relative to that topic or thing that you're teaching every single day needs to be varied depending on everybody you're coming to. Now, moving this on, which I, which I think is, is such an important way because moving into this execution aspect, and, and I would like to because the amount of messages I have from people saying, I can't wait to have my client talk about execution. I know executions, you know, not only been very, very popularized and, you, and you've done an incredible job of, of making that, doing that. So especially here in this country, but um, where does, where does execution, exercise execution fit into this coaching journey? And how, how does it fit in? I mean, we've got this absolutes of what most trainers think execution is. Um, and in your understanding, those layers of execution, what is execution? And what is the layering of execution? So if you, um, let, me, let me paraphrase the question and tell me if this is what you're asking. Yep. Um, if, uh, if, uh, 
trainer starts to understand all of the variables within bench press and become some militant at making sure that bench press is perfect to hit the clavicular division of pec major let's just let's just kind of say there's a there's a there's a specific goal there is there a cost to that person going down to that level of detail is that is that is that the question yes from from a, <clears throat> there's a <clears throat> in your interpretation what is execution gotcha is the, is the first question and then not bashing anybody's depth of execution but i i what are the layers before necessarily we get to that really deep layer and is that deep layer absolutely necessary so execution by by by, by in the term terms of the word let's say exercise execution is the way that someone will perform an exercise in a, in a given rep let's, let's just let's just simplify it to that so that's that's how they're performing it one of the things that we teach in rts are these five questions and these five questions are really the 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 the, the difference between i'm going to be following the rules that someone's laid out for me in this textbook or course over here to the rules of the individual the rules of physics the rules of the body we're going to make this client defined and this is everything so the first two questions out of those five questions who are we talking about what's their goal who are we talking about what's their goal that is the context that rts is delivered so if your goal for you is i want to hit my clavicular division of pec major it's very relevant for my goal i've not been able to do it the execution that i'm going to take you to is going to be perfect for you yeah. and that's required based upon you and your goal that doesn't mean that everyone has to do that and that 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 what i've just said there in the last 30 seconds is often missed and it's often missed because we get we get really excited about you know let's 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 dive into the amount of detail some people get really excited about physiology some people get excited about you know, PCOS, and that's that's their lifetime. Yeah. And now they're looking through everything of the lens of PCOS. And that, that's why I say we've got to zoom back out and what's the lens that we're looking through. Yeah, very true. It's always got to come back to the individual. Mm -hmm. And so if you were to watch me training clients and you were to see some of our clients and see some of how we train, you would see there'd be a big difference. For this individual, we're, we're, we're focusing in on something. For this individual, it's a bit more relaxed and I'm allowing a little bit of movement. And that's based upon who they are and what their goal is. It's got to keep coming back to that, which actually, if you think about it, is what we're talking about with coaching. Mm -hmm. so, so if we miss the purpose of this, and, 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 and in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna backtrack on that. My purpose of studying is to get better with clients. My purpose of teaching is to make an impact with um, with uh, the fitness industry, so we make an impact with our clients. Because there are ninety percent of the population that don't like exercise. They don't enjoy the experience. Yes, of course. They don't want to keep on coming back. There's 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 such untapped potential for health benefits and et cetera, et cetera. We, we are catering for people who already, for the most part, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got this potential. These are just tools. But some people will study because they just want to geek out. And they just want to go to that depth. And they do want to go to that depth. And they do go to that depth beyond what me and you have done. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they know such a level of detail. I wouldn't want them training my clients. Of course. Because I, I might miss the picture. And so that's when it comes to execution, to answer your question, I did want to keep on circling back around to this. How important is execution has got to depend on upon who we're talking about and what's their goal. That's and yeah. I can't, it's hard to 
be any more specific than, than that. However, here's, here's the flip side to that. If you don't think about it, which is where we've all come from, because you just lift the bar, you just lift the dumbbell, you just throw this thing around. If you're not aware, aware of all of these variables, you might not be aware that you're under challenging your 65 year old client. You're under challenging your 18 year old client. You're kind of wasting the time. Yes. They're not gonna get results. The way that they're executing that, dude, my, my, my seven year old boy can lift more than that and he can control more than that. So, so it's, 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 it's that balance between you learn all the tools and now you've got your toolbox. Carpenter, you know, I, I can't imagine that carpenters will kind of get around, you know, and they're up in the toolbox and they just go, we've got to use everything. Or no, 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 throw it away. We're never going to use these again. I mean, that would just be ridiculous. But we seem to have this kind of idea that, that, that we need to do that. Um, but, that, but the execution, it's, it's, it's bringing back to the word that you mentioned, it's, it's about actually being conscious. Like, what is it that you're trying to do at this point in time? What's the goal of this exercise? I love that. I, 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 you know, I think a lot of coaches would be desperate sitting here thinking he's going to talk about, he's going to talk about muscle fiber directions and origin insertions. He's going to talk about, you know, muscle hypertrophy and, and, and all these things, but you've just gone straight back to, it just depends. It, it depends on who we're talking to, depending on where we're at and the, the, this consequence which you've just described which is a, which is a really really important thing and i must admit you know when i did uh, a functional medicine with the institute of functional medicine I, I went away and studied over in florida um it was an incredible incredible event um and i came back and i started to do this absolute thing where i was like i'm looking for all of the problems that you've got now and i lost touch of the person the goal and why they were with me and my ego got in the way and before I knew it, I had everybody going on a completely different course, which wasn't aligned with their goal, which really contra contradicted the reason that they had invested me with me in the first place. And then I started to scale that back. And as I went through my career, I started to notice these small periods of time, which got shorter and shorter over time, where I would obsess, absolute, regress, realign, add into my toolbox, and then it just got bigger over time. And I like this whole idea that ex execution fits into this toolbox, right? Um, and as coaches, mastery is essentially building this toolbox. And somebody said to me yesterday, when I was doing some, some mentoring with somebody, it was like, you tap into these different things. I said, well, that, that's just, just my toolbox. Mm. And, and we look at this whole thing of um, the coaching eye, you know, the ability to see. And would you say that that, and whether you agree with me or not, you know, would you say that the, um, would you describe as uh, somebody who is committed to this level of mastery is also committed to developing this coaching eye, this ability to see what somebody needs? It's, it's uh, the foundation series is, is, is built to develop your art of seeing. seeing. That's what it says on the website. Seeing. And, 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 and what is it that you're seeing you know, what are you looking for? What are you looking at? Because if you don't know what you're looking for or what you're looking at, it's just, you know, it's, uh, there's one of those stories that, that you're always kind of like, really? About, you know, some islanders that, 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 that couldn't see these boats approaching and the, the people on the boats were coming to take over the island and they couldn't see them because they'd never seen them before. And it's, uh, it's one of those stories that, that, that might be just a useful analogy and actually is not true, but it's kind of the same thing. Did you, did you see that the spine was moving there? Did you see the, the deviation? Is that okay? Is that not okay? Um, the thing when you think about, you know, the biggest intervention as, as, a, as a trainer is exercise. At all times, there are, there are properties there are mechanical properties that exist. So we've got inertia. And inertia is one of those things that the faster I move, the more it becomes influential. Someone's doing a pull down, at kind of one second down, one second up. There's a point at which the weight that they're dealing with, the resistance that they're dealing with increases. 
And then there's a point where it decreases so much that actually there's no resistance. So if they're pulling this thing down at one second down, at the top, there's gonna to be a bunch of resistance they're dealing with for the rest of it until they catch, it's gonna be under, under, yeah. under what their threshold is. Now, does that matter for your client? Well, let's think about this. Let's think about just, just you know, we've got a duty of care. Will that affect their joints in a, in a, in a, in a way that will degrade the quality of their joints? I don't know who we're talking about. We need to answer that. Is it relevant for their goal? Is it going to create enough stimulation for the thing that they're looking for? So we're thinking kind of safety and we're thinking the performance, the, the purpose of this exercise. If it's not safe, then you need to stop that. If it's not going to get them what they want, why are we doing this? Now, if you if, if someone turns around, and, and, and I'm telling you this because you know, if, if, if you were to come in and see with a client, we might get them to do an exercise. I know it's safe. It might be under challenged, but the thing that I might be trying to do at that point might be, I want to make them, make them. I want to, to, to encourage them to feel confident in this movement. Or it might be that I just want them to be sensing some different things. It might be something, the goal of this exercise might be completely different to stimulating the tissue. But if we become really kind of myopic and just go, it must be about stimulating this muscle to its fullest capacity at all times, we're missing out on still those questions that come from RTS, who we talk about, what's their goal? That's why it's really, it's really hard for me to post on Instagram because you know I see things and it's like, this is the best exercise for the Anconius and um, who who gives the fuck? Yeah. You like really? Right. And can I ask you then, you know, we're, 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 we can't believe where time's gone and uh, I, I could literally just sit and chat to you all day. Um, but uh, could you share then with everybody who's listening a real valuable lesson which would give or, or skill that you could share right now for coaches to begin their ability to see more? One of the things that we do, and I suggest this after people have finished foundations, however you do your programs, let's say you use an iPad, you open up a text file. And as the client is doing their exercise, you stay present. And in your mind, start to list the things that you see. And that's at the same time that you're giving them a cue. And that's at the same time that you're being present with them. And then in the rest, make a quick note, might be a sentence. If you're using pen and paper, write down a quick note. And, and that's it. Meaning the, the first art of seeing is noticing. That's a therapy um, kind of state. The first art of you actually seeing something is that you notice it. And that's it. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, so true. But that's it. And do you know what? I remember, I remember this. If I saw something, it's so funny you say this because I remember doing it. Why? What does it mean? Where could I potentially go to find out what that means? That's it. Yes. You don't have to fix it now. You don't. You don't. You don't. But it's so amazing that you've said that. I mean, you've never, we've never discussed this, but I had an, a, a desire, whether it's now with what I do, whether or not it's back then, you know, when I was coaching in the beginning days or whatever, but um, I'm going to use your language here. I see this thing. I don't think it's right, but it may be right, but it's created some questioning in my mind. Can I explore that? Yeah. Because at the end of the exploration of it, I may have said it's okay. Uh, you said this when you were at, um, you, when you came to do RTS again at M10. It may be okay. I think we talked about flat um, flat feet, and you went maybe okay. Hmm. But we, we understand it to be a problem. I've noted down that it's a problem. Okay, well let's let's discuss this. 
Hmm. And then at the end of it, you go, ah, for that individual, it's fine. And so that, that gives you, uh, M10 is, a, is an amazing example of a group of trainers that are all encouraged to be vulnerable and to question and to challenge one another and, and come together. If, if you're a trainer listening and who's by themselves, you need to find your people. You need to find your group. You need to find, you know, your, 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 your team, even if you don't necessarily work with them for you to explore this stuff. Yeah. 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 You, you um, because very, very well. uh, Integra, you do this. I know from being there, even when you coach me personally, you know, the, the training that you did with me was not, um, I'll tell you what to do, do it. It was challenging me all the time. And, and do you know what? It's very uncomfortable as a coach. You know, the way that you teach, and we've, we've all at M10 taken a lot from this, is teaching is not telling. Teaching mm. is exploration and discussion as well. And if it's not, it's one-sided, right? Yeah, yeah. Because And, and this, this maybe comes back to what is coaching. Coaching, from my perspective, is the same as teaching. And it's a facilitation. What are we facilitating? Well, I may have some expertise. I may have some knowledge that I can impart for sure. Absolutely. However, you have also got a lot of those questions because out of those five questions, who are we talking about? Actually, if I can help you figure out an answer to this, if I can help you figure out a solution, then that becomes a part of you. Yeah. You actually take responsibility for this process. You actually take ownership. And if you take responsibility and ownership, meaning you don't give the responsibility to me for your success or failure. If you actually take it, then long after our professional relationship has end you will continue on okay. and that for me is 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 really exciting i love that absolutely love that michael um we've come to the end actually because uh i can't believe where time has absolutely flown um <laughs> and I, I honestly i i can't thank you enough for spending time talking to the thousands of trainers that download the the, the podcast and um to those of you that don't uh, don't know michael you've um You've been privileged to listen to uh, someone I have a lot of respect for, Michael, um, and, and I, I thank you for what you've helped me with mentally. And I encourage coaches. Uh, in fact, Michael knows this very well. If you do our personal training mentorship, we encourage to go and see Michael. Um, and I know that doesn't happen a great deal in the industry, um, but mm. uh, there are stepping stones. And, uh, you know, we we do with a lot of, lot of personal trainers. And there is a, I want to explore this thing that we ent enter into a, a lower level and if you're inspired by that then your whole journey throughout your career will require you to look deeper into subjects but never forget that it's a piece of the puzzle in the coaching process um, and, and 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 michael can you tell uh, everybody uh how to get hold of you how to find out about everything that you do and just share everything to everybody now if you can sure so the the, the easiest way is the website integra hyphen education.net and we do have an instagram channel which is currently being rebooted uh, integra.education amazing guys mm -hmm. i encourage you to, to 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 get involved and uh yeah the m10 guys um you know we've done a, studied a lot with michael and you know i know ant still logs in and spends time listening to you exploring um yeah. and, and 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 he does he goes just these deep explorations and I just encourage everybody listening to the podcast today to please open your mind to being an explorer and not necessarily being an absoluter and yeah. get, get ready for a, a journey that uh, is, is, is never ending, but without doubt, incredibly exciting, right? And, 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 and that's what you do. That's what you do. And that's what you encourage people to do. And you show people how to do it. There, there, there's a, you, you are you are guiding people into the unknown. And what is the unknown? So if we have a, a particular, this is our bubble right now, this is everything that we know, this is our experiences, this is our expectations, this is, this is what we've been taught from a young age all the way up until now, it's really hard to see what we don't see. Of course. And one of the things that, that, that you always do is go, what am I not seeing? Um, and being able to see what you don't see is stepping into the unknown, which it, which could be scary because it's 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 comfortable to be in a familiar place, but 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 you are 
absolutely inspiring in, in terms of your ability to guide people and your own personal journey, which is which is very inspirational for me. So thank you very much for for for, for being there. It's a it's a pleasure to you know to to know you and, and have you as a friend and colleague in this industry. And I, I'm very grateful for our relationship that will continue to evolve. And guys, please do check Michael out. Um, please come back over and listen to this episode again. Don't just say, "Oh, I've done it, I've done it." This is something actually that you need to listen to multiple times. Because, um, you know, I, I don't say that to every episode, but please do that and please let it sink in and, and contribute to this incredible industry of coaches, not necessarily. If you choose to be a trainer, good on you. But if you choose to explore the world of coaching, this will probably be one of the most valuable podcasts you'll listen to in your whole career. Uh, and I mean that. And, and please do us all a favor, Michael and myself. Please share this episode. Tag yeah. everybody. Tag everybody on social media. Tag Integra. You know, tag M10 because uh, just want to help more trainers. That's what we're both in this industry for. And the funny thing is, Michael's an educator. I'm an educator, and understand this: we're complementing each other. That's what's wonderful mm -hmm. about this industry. We don't have to be solos calling people out. You know, I'm incredibly complimentary to Michael and encourage everybody to do what he does. And you know, um, I, I, that's very, very important to us both. And I know Michael and I share this that. Uh, you know, um, we're all in this to help people. And that, that's what our mm. role is, right? Um, but Michael, thank you. Um, My really pleasure. Really thank you. Appreciate your time. Thanks.